Amen. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. I know, I know that no matter what I'm going through in life, no matter what my situation or circumstance is, that I can just say those three words and all of heaven is in the overflow of praise. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. God loves us so much. Amen. Merry Christmas. Praise God. I'm so thankful that y'all are here on a Wednesday evening. Praise God. Uh, it does not exclude you to be here tomorrow evening. Now, don't get me wrong. I know you guys have family things to do. Praise God, do that, amen. But if you don't, hallelujah, please, please. I almost said in my Japanese accent, I could have said, freeze. Freeze. Freeze come. Freeze come to church. Freeze come. <laughs> at midnight, amen. Tomorrow at midnight. We're going to start exactly at midnight. Hallelujah. I am so excited. Please pray for me when we open up in prayer. Praise God. Um, leadership prayed over me. Uh, Pastor, I thought this message for tonight was going to be for tomorrow night. And uh, this is incredible because um, uh, just like just like every day, I don't know what's going on. Amen. Just like just like you, I just worship the Lord Jesus. I'm surprised we're still here. Amen. How many of you are surprised that we're still here, right? Come on now, after that storm? Come on now. You wanna can I share something to you that we're gonna get right into because we got a lot to cover and praise God. Uh, please, please pray, pray, God. But uh, Holy Spirit said I can share this with you. I had I had quite a few appointments to share. Oh well, to, to go through just to share with you. Um, it, it ranged from Camelsville to to Danville on Monday, and um, it was one of those days where you ever have those days where you just like I just want to go home, oh, yes. right? And and you know, it, it felt like the drive. Now listen, I am so blessed that the elders that our, our church blesses us with transportation for now while our car is being fixed, amen? amen? And I want to say with all of our hearts, thank you. We don't take that for granted, amen? But I kid you not, the wheels on the bus go round and round, right? Oh my goodness, on Monday, Elder Lance it felt like round and round and round and round. You know what I mean? And I'm like, Lord, I just want to go home. And it was at one point when I was just saying that to God, God says, you're already home. Amen. And I need to say that to you because it's amazing how we can get trapped in what this bubble that we live in when this isn't our reality. The glory of God is our reality, our eternity has already started. Amen. And I, I'm thanking God now, right now, that we are home. Amen. Amen. You see, home is a mindset. Say that word with me, mindset. mindset. And if your mindset is victimized, if your mindset is continuously burdened with torment and anxiety, well, guess what? You limit God's presence in your life and you make that situation your home. And God says, I have nothing to do with that. The pain that you're in or you think you're in, guess what? Just start giving praise to God. Amen. Right? Just start praising God for what's happening. And so I share all that with you because I, I got home at about five something in the evening. And, and I didn't even knock on the door. I was about to, and then Trish opened the door. And Pastor, check this out. Trish opened the door. And she got herself all ready like we were going to go on a date. Mama Kay, she was, I mean, she is so beautiful, but she was, she was just make up, dressed, hair perfect. Are you hearing me? And I, I looked at her, and of course, listen, I'm just human, right? I'm like, dang! <laughs> I'm right, I'm like, dang! And before she let me say another word, she said, this isn't for you, this is for God. And she was ready to be raptured. She, she got ready. Like we were going on, a, on, on like, I'm talking about on the most expensive day that you all paid for. Because right now I can't do it. I can't do it. Right? And you know what? Just right there, conviction came on my heart. I went to my prayer room and I said, Father, forgive me. 
you know, forgive, forgive my attitude of being tired or fed up, you know? Can I, can I just confess that to you all? You know, I'm not here trying to act like I'm holier than anybody. I'm not. Listen, guys, I'm the most broken one of all you all. I am. I'm the most broken one. But you know what I have? His name is Lord Jesus. Amen? His name is Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And His Spirit reigns in me. His Spirit reigns in you. Amen? So we're going to kick this off. The title of this message is Glory Revealed. And this is what Holy Spirit wanted to show. Now before we get into the message, this is what God wanted to, wanted to take us through. And then we're going to pray. Praise God. The Holy Spirit said He wants to show this first. And then we're going to pray. We're going to be in the book of Isaiah 12, verses 1 through 6. But if you notice, in between, we're going to go to the Gospel of John. And we're going to listen to what Lord Jesus Christ had to say. Of course, everything is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. You're going to see some pictures up on the screen. The Holy Spirit said not to say nothing. pictures just shared a snapshot of what many of us go through in what the Bible calls we live in a vapor of a life. You know, there's some of you that are older than me, there's many of you that are younger than me. But it doesn't matter because if you're blessed to live to 120 years old, it's a vapor. A vapor is a vapor. Can I get an amen? amen. You know, when, when you see somebody light a cigarette or you see some smoke, you can't gauge how long the smoke was there, right, Brother Taylor? Because of the fact that you see it and boom, it's gone, right? But it's what happens in these moments that try to lock us up in here, right? It's what happens in our past that the enemy is hoping that you revisit so that this can be your mindset. Yes, I know on the screen you see a prison, right? But let me explain clearly to you. If your mindset is based on all the things done wrong to you, and, and listen, I'm not here to tell you that, oh, well, too bad, whatever. No, that's not my heart. My heart is to tell you that there's a devil and there's a God. Amen? God did not do that to you. Can I get an amen? God did not do those horrible things to you. His name is Satan. The devil did that to you. Can I get an amen? amen? Whoever did it to you, hear my heart now. This is a hard one. And this is a tough one to swallow. Whoever did it to you, guess what? It wasn't them. It's either the devil or God. Amen? And the devil used that person to do harm to you, hoping that your existence would be just like this. You know, we're living right now in a fallen, fallen generation. I mean, seriously, beloved church family, we need to pray for our youth. Praise God we have youth upstairs. Pray for Pastor Mary, Pastor Tish, amen? Pray for them, hallelujah. Because other than being involved in pastoring, Listen, this generation has so many distractions. And every distraction, the intent of that distraction is to do this. Explain. Okay, I will. You don't have enough money. You don't live in a nice enough house. You're not skinny enough. Can you not laugh so loud? <laughs> I got spanks on. Right? You look a certain way. Right? Oh, what about this one? You're confused of your identity. Right? The enemy's hoping. 
hoping that you get in this faith. And that's where I was before Lord Jesus. And guess what? I was angry. Crunchy. Mad. Insecure. Insecure. I confess to you, even in the ministry, it's easy to take insecurity with you. Right, Pastor? Even in the ministry, with all the horrible things that we've seen, other Christians do to other Christians, do to us. It's easy to take that insecurity, and now all of a sudden, you close yourself off. Right? Don't want to have relationships. You try to use being a Christian as an, as, you know, as an excuse. Well, I'd just rather have church at home and not associate with those people. Right? It's a lie from the pit of hell. Because remember, the devil wants to keep you isolated, right? And go ahead and be all holy and everything, right? But then, so he can just start messing with you, right? Say with me, no more in Jesus' name, amen? You see, I was a victim. I was a victim. But the revelation of Christ being Lord and Savior, when God comes into your heart and his presence, his spirit is reigning within you, God exposes this devil, and now you're no longer a victim, amen? You're no longer a victim, hallelujah. So say this to the beloved church family, never again. No more. I am eternally beloved. Forever, ever? Yeah. Ever, ever, ever? Yeah. Ever, ever, ever? Yeah. Ever, ever, ever? Yeah. Alpha and Omega. Come on, beloved son of God. Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. Say this one with me. I am a gift that keeps on giving. I am a gift that keeps on giving. And say it again. I am. I am. Glory revealed. Glory revealed. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. It's all for you, Lord Jesus Christ, amen? It's God's house. Hallelujah. God's house. Any mouthpiece who speaks at his pulpit is all Holy Spirit glory. Amen? Listen, we have elders, deacons, prayer words. You all write prayer words that we don't tolerate nonsense in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? amen? We don't tolerate garbage. We don't tolerate foolishness. Amen? Listen, if you want to do that on your own time, or you want to go ahead and pick it back up, when you leave, that's between you and God. Amen? But here in God's holy church, we don't tolerate that. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we bind up every demonic principality, in the name above every name, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We plead your holy and precious blood, Lord. Father, every word that is spoken from your pulpit, your holy church, Open Arms Community Church, Father, teach us through the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, we only go through you. We only worship you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, this is the only way we know how to bless you. And your anointing, your presence, hallelujah, you reign, Father God. Our beloved elders said it just in our prayer in the prayer room. Thank you, Father God, for the control of your church. Thank you, Father God, for your order, your anointing, your presence. We fear you, Father God. And I don't just say that, Father. I pray that my walk, my talk, my step, step by step, Father God, is in fear of you, Lord Jesus Christ, because you love us. And Father God, we cherish your love. We cherish agape, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So Father God, as we worship you, may your light shine through us like never before. May every angel in heaven, Father God, fight and protect every house represented. Those who cannot be here, those on Facebook watching, Father God, bless them, O oh Lord. And we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. All God's beloved said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory revealed. Amen. This picture is, is taken, as I said earlier to Pastor. I thought this was getting it all ready. I thought this was tomorrow um, night's worship service as far as our Christmas Eve worship service. Holy Spirit said, no, it's for tonight. And I said, hallelujah. And of course, Pastor, I'm like, what are we doing tomorrow? <laughs> Right, other than that? Sister Graham, like, what are we doing? And God was just, just, you know, isn't it amazing? Tomorrow may never come. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you imagine? In a twinkle of an eye. I can only imagine. Amen. Love that song. Praise God. So this picture was taken. If you need to read the
the verses. It's from Exodus 20. And um, it starts in verse 18. But this is this is the picture taken from when God was supposed to have a reunion. Our father was supposed to have a reunion with his children. But then we, say it with me, we, we, at this point, said to God, uh -uh, Moses, we're going to listen to you. But we can't fool with that because we're going to die. And how hurtful is that to our father? Can you imagine, Brother Lee, a father who loves his children, that he would bankrupt a nation just like that? That he would show his glory in all of the miraculous things that they saw? But what happened? They said, well, Moses, we'll listen to you, but not... You see, this is the day and age that we live in now. There's a lot of people that say, well, we'll listen to you, Lord Jesus Christ, but we want nothing to do with your Holy Spirit. May I say that again? Yeah, I'm a Christian. I'll listen to you, Lord Jesus Christ, but I want to live the way I want to live, and I have nothing to do with your spirit. That's demonic. Can you break up the God here? Amen. Agape. Who is agape? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So let me ask you something. I receive Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I receive Lord Jesus Christ. Father is the one who said, can I get an amen? Holy Spirit. Right? How does Father send Holy Spirit? He has to hear from who? Amen. Right? He makes it so simple, doesn't he? Very simple. Amen. So when Lord Jesus Christ says to the Father, they confess me. Father has to say, David Simpson, you are mine. Here's Holy Spirit. Right? But if you want nothing to do with Spirit, if you want nothing to do with Holy Spirit, and you want to live a life of perversion, can you believe it? Right now, in this day and age, there's religion that say homosexuality is okay. That is a lie from the pit of hell and it will drag you to hell. Oh, nobody likes that, but I'm just speaking the truth. I cannot stand before my God Almighty and stand before Lord Jesus and Lord Jesus say, why do you say it's okay to be homosexual? When my Bible, my spirit continuously says it's a lie from the pit of hell, it's perverted. It's an abomination. But yet now we can go ahead and say Jesus is okay with everything. Believe it or not, I hear it all the time. Am I here to judge you? Do I judge anybody? No. Who is our judge? Lord Jesus Christ. Did Lord Jesus Christ not give us clear instructions in the Holy Bible how to live a holy life? Amen? And did Lord Jesus Christ just leave us with no power that we cannot do anything, that we're just like, oh, well, whatever this world says, I'm just going to do, boo, boo, boo. Or did Lord Jesus Christ die for this very reason, so that God's Spirit, His anointing, can reside in you and live in you, and you can experience the power of Holy Spirit in you every day of your life. Amen. 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 What are we going to do with this glory revealed? And this is what Holy Spirit shows us. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 12. In that day you will say, I will praise you, Lord, although you are angry, you are angry with me. Does that not look like a crunchy face? Yes. Yeah. Why was God angry? Well, I just explained this to you, and I'm going to do it again because Holy Spirit said revisit it, all right? God is angry when in pride we don't want a relationship with if you really need to rest in this meditation, please, please, in Jesus' name, I speak this over your life. Look at the price that was paid for God Almighty to have a relationship with you. Right, Brother Taylor? Right, Mom Dad? Look at the price that was paid. Well, Brother Joey, explain. Look at what Lord Jesus Christ went through so that God 
can be yours. And that you can belong to God. Are you hearing the magnitude as far as what this message is trying to speak and teach all of us as we prepare ourselves for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? Can you feel the magnitude of what God is saying? Listen, I need a relationship with you. I cannot say this enough. If your problem is social media, if your problem is the internet, if your problem is not, get rid of it. Try 
you directly apply it to Amen. what Lord Jesus Christ wrote for you. Amen. You want to talk about how anxious you are? Oh, that's a big one now with the youth these days. Oh, I just have so much anxiety. No, you don't. I'm straight up like that. I don't care. I answer to God. Oh, I'm just, I'm just so anxious. No, you're not. No, you just don't know. No, you just don't. What you're feeling is called emotion. Get over it. You don't need no magic pill. You don't need therapy. It's called life. Get over it. Amen. But rather than saying, get over it, come with Jesus, bring it to the altar. Listen, start praising Jesus that he loves you. Start praising God that he died for you. Amen. Right now, that's trying to keep his voice from echoing 
like that mighty thunder roll. And we're going to go fast in these next few steps, praise God. But this is what God had to say. Remember, we're in the book of Isaiah. How many years before Lord Jesus? 700. Let's say 700. That's a long time now, right? And then this is what, this is what he had to say. You were, you were angry with me. Say with me, you were. You were angry with me, but your anger has turned away. Amen? And that's the, I love that. I love that, that graphic of change breaking. Yeah. Amen? We witnessed that here in fellowship and worship. We witnessed this over individuals, over families, over marriages. We witnessed it. Right now, we're witnessing it over children. Right? They were once bound up with addiction, with confusion. Now, they're free. Amen. They're free through the power of Holy Spirit. Amen? The anointing God is flowing through them. Amen? Say with me, free. free. Hallelujah. And that's what God wants you. He wants you to be free in his Holy Spirit. Now let me ask you, does God want you to be free to live a perverse, corrupt, garbage life? No. no. Let me grab my pearls. How dare we? Right? The freedom that we have through Christ is his presence, Holy Spirit, that he leads us and guides us and fellowship with us, ministers to us, in how we live a life pleasing to God Almighty. Amen? Amen. How many of you want to live a life pleasing to God? Amen? Amen? Amen. It has to start with wanting to live that life pleasing. Amen? See, if you don't want to live a life pleasing to God, right, then guess what? You're going to be religious to God. And it goes back to, yeah, I want Jesus, but I don't want you, Holy Spirit. This is the condition the world is in right now. But if we get right with the Lord and truly repent, I don't want to jump ahead of God, but if we repent, and now we say, Father, forgive me, I receive the gift. But rather than receiving the gift and putting the gift to work, I set the gift aside. Forgive me, Father. I pray in Jesus' name that all of you are allowing his gifts to flow through your life. Amen? Say when we turn away, repent. Say like me, turn away, turn away. Repent. repent. You see, God will not ever ask you to do something that he hasn't done himself. Amen. Pastor, explain. When God says to you, repent, to come to the altar, to get on your knees, to get on your face, and ask for forgiveness, God is not asking you to do something that he never did. Wow. You see, the reason why God turned away is because something took place that made him say, I repent. What the heck did this preacher just say? Did he just say God repented? Did you not read it? Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away. God's anger has turned away. And what does this turn away mean? Say with me, repent. repent. How did God repent? He turned away. Now how... How? <laughs> Come on, Mary. It's Wednesday evening. How would we have so much fun Wednesday evening, right? How would God turn away when he was so angry at the fact that his children wanted nothing to do with them, no matter what he did, they said no? How in the world would God say, I'm no longer angry, I repent, I turn away from my anger? Thank you, my beloved wife. Say his name with me, Jesus. Jesus. You see right here, Lord Jesus Christ is the chain breaker. You see, we were, we were once all in prison, enslaved by sin. We were once all these people that, guess what? It doesn't look too good. Have you ever been in a situation like that where this just don't look too good? Right? God knows. Some of you right now are in it right now. God knows. But Lord Jesus Christ, he is the chain breaker, Amen. And you saw everything that took place earlier about how growing up, you know, whatever you experience in your life, how it, 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 it tried to keep you prisoner in here. And the question is, how do we break away from here? You know, if I'm abusive, how do I get rid of this abusive, demonic oppression? Many people ask me all the time, as a Christian, can you be possessed? No. If you're really a Christian. Can I get an amen? amen? If you're really a Christian, if you're a blood-bought Christian, the Holy Spirit lives in you, you cannot be possessed. Amen. But we got free will, don't we? Yes. Which means, sis, you can go home and look at the computer 
and do whatever you want on that computer, right? Or you can go, right, bro, and you get your phone, and you can do whatever you want on that phone. God gives you free will. And it's up to you with this free will if you're going to open yourself to demonic things. And that's where the demons try and start trying to oppress a child of God with heaviness and oppression and trying to do this. How silly is it? How silly is it for a prisoner to stay in a cage but the whole time the door's unlocked? Well, because many of us, many of us in leadership have been locked up. Right? Many of us. Right? And it's in this situation, right, where you have to ask yourself, am I going to continue with this victim mentality? Or am I going to allow his presence to reign in my life? That no matter how I feel, no matter how busy I get, I'm not going to compromise. Can I get an amen? I can see Holy Spirit fire all over your eyes, okay? I'm not going to compromise. Lord Jesus, I know what you did for me. Holy Spirit, I hear you. And I'm not going to stop. I'm going to worship you until my very last breath or until you come back for me. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen?
Lord Jesus Christ is seated at the throne. Amen. Your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Amen. All of this was put on the body of Lord Jesus Christ. Every bit of it. Amen. So when you ask about comfort, how many of you want the comfort of God or the comfort of this world? You see, the comfort of this world is only temporary. Can I get an amen? amen? I was a drug addict for over 15 years. I'm afraid this doesn't fall on deaf ears because you're surrounded by all of us that by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ have overcome. Amen. It's all because of him. Amen. It's all because of the Lord Jesus. But I say this to you because there's some of you right now that's carrying burdens. And you think that it's so heavy, so big. But let me just expose this devil to you right now. It could be that one unforgiving thing in your life. It could be that one thing that you're just so upset about in what a family member did. It could be from an ex. It could be from somebody that violated you. Listen, I know it's horrible because it's the devil. The devil did that. It's horrible. Can I get it? It's horrible. But what I'm asking you, beloved child of God, is here it is. We're coming upon Christmas Eve coming. Will we, will we just go ahead and wrap that thing up? And tonight present it to Lord Jesus Christ and say, here's this gift that I've been carrying. And all it did was torment me. But I want to give this to you because you paid for it. You see, the way God wants to comfort you is to forgive you and to allow forgiveness for that mercy and grace to flow through your life. Surely, God is my salvation. Yesha Yahu, Hebrew name for Isaiah, and the Hebrew name for Isaiah is God is my salvation. Say with me, Yesha Yahu. God bless you. But the word that God has for us is, what does your name mean? Huh? What does PJ mean? Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, that was perfect. That was perfect. That was perfect. That was perfect. What does Brother David mean? Hallelujah. Beloved child of God, right? You see, here is the prophet Isaiah speaking. When I say a prophet, you have the gift of prophecy, Holy Spirit in you. Every, Holy Spirit gives you every gift. Can you get an amen? Whose gift is it, beloved church family? It's his gift. Amen. And if you will allow his gift, he will flow through you. Here is the prophet Isaiah speaking. God is my salvation. Speaking of Lord Jesus Christ, who was to come 700 years later. But here he is saying, God is my salvation. This is his name. What God is asking of you, send me. What is your name? You see, we can go on and on about, oh, well, my name is this, my last name is this, I'm this nationality, I'm this old, I was raised here, I was raised here. Starting tonight and tonight for the rest of eternity, your name means, say with me, God is, God is my salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. God was a 
raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the grave. Amen. 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 You are saved. Amen. Say with me, I am saved. So this, this is a question that your brother just has to ask you. This means then that when you're going through medical challenges in your life, opportunities, are you saved from that? Yes. Poor people, are you saved from that? Yes. If you're going through financial struggles, are you saved from that? Yes. If you're going through a hardship in your relationship, are you saved from that? Yes. If you're going through rebellious children, are you saved from that? Yes. So you're saying to me, you're saying to me that God has saved you from yes. everything. Amen? So when we say that we're saved, hallelujah, the conviction of Holy Spirit within us is, are we acting like it? Right, Pastor? Are we acting like it? Huh? I love it when a pastor says we should be. Yeah. Doesn't he deserve it? Yeah. I love that word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We should be. Yeah. Right? Right? Should we be like him? No. I love it when Mason's here. Where is Mason? Got his teddy bear in here from the church. <laughs> Y'all pray for Brother Mason. <laughs> Got a season. Amen? Or do we look like him? Amen? Amen? Do you think his light shines through you like this? No. What about this? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I don't even think this is low beam. I think that you're like, <laughs> you're that all. Right? This is high beam. Right? You know what's so awesome now that we wear masks? And I say awesome, I mean it. Awesome. Listen, I don't give any, any credit on nothing. Praise God. What's so awesome is wearing this big old mask. You really got to be smiling for somebody to know you're smiling. You got to get in there. See, just have some face is covered, right? Have your face is covered, so you just got to... I'm serious, sometimes even that trick, sometimes I get this car, take off my mask, I'm like, whoo. Whoo, right? But show them Jesus, amen? Listen, I know Jesus is Lord. I know His Spirit lives in you. I know His life is in you, praise God. But don't allow the enemy to block His life. Amen? Let his light shine, beloved church family. Amen? God will always be rejoicing. And you know why? Because his presence. Remember the presence on the mountain? Amen. Remember that? I don't think you all remember. Say it with me. His presence, his presence. is in me. Surely God is my salvation, I will trust and not be afraid. 
the Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. In Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So is it your salvation or his salvation? His salvation. Let's make this clear. Let's make this clear. Let's take some time on this, right? It's not Joey corrected salvation. It's the only salvation. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And this is how you know that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Holy Spirit. He reigns in me. He's in complete control of me. Can I get an amen? amen. Y'all stand up with me. Praise God. Whoever believes in me in the scriptures that says streams of living water will flow. Hallelujah. Does this look like stream of living water? No, That's crunchy, right? Streams of living water will flow from within him. Can I get an amen? Amen.